One week before, clubs all have a rest in the AFL, but there's no rest for the faint-hearted right here on AFL TV. All thanks to Ferntree Gully Holden and HSV, where driving and local footy means a great deal. The final week before the mid-season buy for a lot of clubs in the EFL this weekend. There's plenty of great games and we're right across them here on EFL TV. And one man who's always across everything in the EFL is Peter Frosty Baird. Frosty, let's get stuck into Division 1 straight away. Lilydale. Now, they're an interesting club. Came up from Division 2 a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of years ago, I should say. They're, they're going okay in Division 1 at the moment. Good, solid 10-point win over East Ringwood uh, last weekend. Are they that fifth team? Are they maybe got the edge on Knox at the moment. It's a bit of a log jam happening there at the moment, Ben, for that fifth spot on the ladder. I think the top four are clearly the best four sides in Division 1, but from there down, probably from fifth down to about seventh or eighth at the moment, there's probably four, five, maybe six teams staking a claim uh, for that last spot in the finals to play in September action, and if it's not Lilydale, maybe it's Knox, it could even be Roval or East Ringwood, um, maybe Blackburn on their day as well, so we just have to wait and see there, but Lilydale, they're going on great guns at the moment, they're really well coached, really like the way Simon Rourke goes about the job as coaching of that Falcon side and I rate him as one of the best coaches just not only in Division 1 but right across the competition and Lou they're flying at the moment In Division 2 last weekend Frosty all of the attention was on the Montrose and North Ringwood game and rightly so and it was a great game to call as well but Moorabark and Doncaster East was arguably the most interesting result Donny East uh, registering a huge huge upset in the end able to get over the line by 26 points but where does it leave both clubs, particularly Moorabark, in fact, with the news that Tulevsky's uh, not coming back to the club straight away? Um, where does it leave both clubs? It's a real disappointing result for Moorabark. They're a team that really fancied themselves um, at playing in, in finals this year. They finished third at the end of the home and away season last year, made it all the way through to a preliminary final. Unfortunately, are unable to take that next step. And this year was probably the year for the Mustangs to really go that one step further and perhaps play in a grand final. But the results so far haven't really looked that way. They're, they're not going to achieve that, I don't think, from where they're standing at the moment. And a game against Doncaster Reese, who, let's face it, they've been struggling in their first few rounds of this year. They've had some big beltings, but they've had also a couple of surprise wins. That game against Muralbach on the weekends, the ones the Mustangs had to win to play September action, and for them to go down to Doncaster East, well, that's a really disappointing result for them. And for Donny East, it might be just what they need to, to get their season back on track. Um, they've lifted themselves off the bottom of the ladder in Division 2, so perhaps we may need to reassess where Doncaster East are. I'd written them off. Maybe they're, they're not as bad as what I thought they were. The log jam at the top of the Division 3 ladder continues to get tighter and tighter. Two teams right up there is Baronia and Templestowe and their very own Braden Ingram headed out to Tormore Reserve. Thanks, Ben. Out here on a lovely night at Tormore Reserve and with Baronia's Mark Williams. Uh, Mark lost to Doncaster by 36 points last week and you kicked 4 9 to half time. A little bit of inaccuracy to that cause some issues later in the game. Yeah, probably did a little bit, but I think we just sort of run out of legs in the end. It was a pretty physical game, and um, yeah, Doncaster sort of just ran over the top of us in the end. But, um, you know, there was some positive signs. We, we, as, as you said, we started reasonably well. We just kicked a bit inaccurately, so at least we know we can match it with the best teams because they're on top at the moment. So, yeah, we're looking good for the future. Hopefully we can get more consistent. And uh, you were out for two weeks before you came back for the Doncaster game, had a bit of hamstring soreness. Uh, how'd you pull up after the game? Yeah, I've pulled up reasonably good. A um, little bit sore, but that's probably to be expected. As you said, missed two games, but yeah, pretty good. Pretty good tonight. I've already jogged a few laps and feels feel, feels really good. So, very nice. And at the moment, you seem to be thumping the lower sides. But when it comes to the stronger sides, such as uh, One Turner South and Doncaster, uh, you're struggling a bit. Why do you think that is? Um, I think I think this big round Tormore suits us a lot. We've got some young kids in the team. We've got three blokes promoted from the under 19s this year who are fairly light built, and uh, a couple of the other blokes that played under 19s last year fairly fast. So the, the bigger the ground, the more suited we are. And both times Doncaster and Wanney South, probably two of the smaller grounds, didn't suit. No excuse, but I think that if we played them on our ground, it would be a lot closer. And how have you found the adjustment from a Division One club in Scoresby back to uh, Div Division Three in Baronia? Yeah, it's it's uh, there's some similarities and some differences, I guess. Um, probably a lot more um, at at Scoresby, there there are a lot more 
polished with the skills and all that sort of stuff. But the young kids here, like there, there's some great players here. As I said, there's some 19 year olds that have come up and really impressed. Like um, uh, begsy has been the best players, probably four out of seven games. Watto come up. You got the young player of the uh, week this week, and there's a few others that have stepped up as well. So overall, there's been there's a few differences, but yeah, just um, we're getting there. So hopefully we can uh, improve and make the finals. See what happens from there. And you're the second most defensive club in Divi 3 in terms of points scored. Obviously, you're a forward. But, I mean, was that, was that a focus of the of the club and of Mark Hardy during the pre-season? Yeah, definitely with the pre-season. We really worked a lot on our zone and, and, and a few little um, other presses and that sort of stuff that we uh, want to implement for the season. And the boys have really took it on and, um, and it's going really well so far. And hopefully we can just keep... Keep improving it and getting a little bit, a little bit better. And a huge game this week against Temple So lose and you're potentially two games outside the top five. What needs to change this week if you're going to get the win? We just need to be more consistent. Like on the weekend, I reckon we probably played two really good 15-minute patches where we the first first 15 minutes, I think we kicked two, three to one point and we really probably should have been four or five goals up at that stage. If we can just be more consistent and really... So far this year, when we've been on top of teams, we haven't put, it, we haven't put them away. It would be good to be able to just do that this week and really send a message to the rest of the comp that we're a, the real deal. Well, Mark, thanks very much for joining us here on AFL TV and good luck for the, uh, this week and the rest of the season. No worries, thanks very much. And a big event in Division 4 last weekend, Peter, with kangaroo legend, shin boner of the century, Glenn Archer, playing for the Park Orchards Footy Club and the club says huge, huge numbers, record numbers down at the club, uh, certainly seemed like a great event. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Glenn Archer, his son, plays there at the Park Orchards Junior Footy Club. Uh, he's obviously got an affiliation with the club. And for someone who of Glenn's prestige and standing within the game to go back and play at a local club, it's just all positive for the Park Orchards Footy Club. And uh, Glenn was very good with his time. Straight after the game, he chatted with our very own, the excited one, Billy Vickers. Thanks, Ben. You call me the excitable one, and I certainly am this afternoon. I'm here with Shinboner of the Century, 300 game, North Melbourne and now Park Orchard superstar, Glenn Archer. Arch, firstly, thanks so much for joining us here on EFL TV. Wasn't the result you were hoping for today, but how was it out there, mate? Um, it was pretty tough, uh, considering I picked my hamstring last week, and so I was on one league, but uh, I still, still enjoyed it. Would have been good if I could run up the field and get amongst it a little bit more instead of playing out of the square, but all in all, I enjoyed it, uh, other than losing. And uh, what type of preparations go into coming out of retirement, essentially, and putting your hand up to play a bit of Divi 4 EFL footy this week? Uh, no, I've, been, I've just had about six training sessions with the, with the lads. Um, my son plays uh, in the, at the club in the under-11, so just wanted to support the club. Very obviously new to the competition, their second year in, and I still enjoy having a run around. And uh, so got it there today, and... Hopefully, if I can get my hamstring right and stop pinging it, I'll, uh, I'll come back and play another game later in the year. That would be absolutely fantastic for the club. And that's obviously your affiliation with the club is that you've got your young son playing. I know, I understand you're coaching the juniors as well. And there's a pretty um, good pedigree of footy parents in the team above, I believe, as well. Is that right? Uh, yeah, the team that I coach, obviously got my son. We've got Brett Ratton's son, uh, Brett Montgomery's son. And John Peter Budge's son, who played for St Kilda. So there's some good pedigree in the team, they, and they go well. That's right. Um, look, it looked like the boys, they did really well in patches today, but they couldn't really put it together for four quarters, I didn't think, and also just struggling with maybe a few basic skill errors. Forest Hill were pretty silky today as well, I thought. I think they've improved a, a great deal. What did you make of it? Yeah, no, I reckon Forest Hill got some really uh, good exponents of the kick. They, uh, they use the ball really well. Our boys, not so much, um, and I think our goal kicking, thanks to me, didn't didn't help either. Kicking, I kick five points, I think, and uh, yeah, so two goals though. Yeah, two goals, but this should. Yeah, uh, but the um, obviously when you you know the, all the guys do the hard work up the field, you've got to you, you've got to kick them goals, and uh, well, I think I don't know how many points we kicked in the end, but it was a lot. I think seventeen. Yeah. So if you nail, you know, six, if you turn six of them into goals. It could have been a different result. Certainly. Um, you're known as one of the most courageous players to play AFL footy. What was it like out there today? Did the competitive juices return to you? How were you feeling out there? Was it a bit nostalgic? 
Yeah, no, like I said, I enjoyed it. Um, obviously, once you cross the line and the ball gets in your area, you're, you're competitive and you still want to win the ball. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's just, uh, would have been nice if, if my legs were feeling a little, had a bit more spring in it so I could actually get to the contest sometimes. But no, I, uh, I really enjoyed it. We'll ask you about recovery. How are you going to go over the next few days, mate? Uh, well, I'm icing the hamstring now. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I think I've, I've definitely got ice in a fair bit. It's been been torn for a while now. So. Does it does it ping every time you play, or is it just something you need to work on? Or no, uh, it's it's like anything. If you if you don't prepare properly for uh, f- for this sport for footy, um, like I still train, I still go to the gym, I still run, but it's got, it doesn't help me with footy because obviously when you go out there, your muscles are a little bit older, uh, and when you when you bend down, it's really tough, so unless I was able to put a whole pre-season in, it'll just keep on going. Obviously, it's fantastic when you look around and you see EFL football, it's so important to the community, is, and it's something a little bit that you can give back to the community as well, just taking some time out to play, bring the people through the gates as well. It's a great feeling around the place, having an absolute legend back like you. It must feel good to give a little bit back in just a small way to come back and play footy here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but selfishly, I, lo- I love doing it as well. I, I love local footy, always have. Um, played my local footy at Noble Park and Lindale. Um, as soon as I finished, I went back to local footy. I had 17 years in the AFL and it wore me down in the end. Uh, but it, I, Park Orchards, is, you know, I've been living out here for 17 years now. They're a fantastic community. They've got great people around the club. Uh, it's only their second year, but I've got no doubt uh, they'll be pretty successful in the years to come. Glenn, thanks so much again for joining us here on EFL TV. We absolutely love seeing you run around in a park orchards jumper and as well playing EFL footy. Thanks again so much. Cheers for your time. I'm Billy Vickers for EFL TV. Looking forward to chatting now with the head of the AFL Coaches Association, Danny Frawley. He's here to promote the wingman competition, Danny. It's come round once again. 12 months goes very quickly. Certainly has. I've got grey. You look younger, actually, Thank so you, um, that's a good effort. No, it's a, it's a great concept um, from the Department of Justice and the AFL Coaches Association. Uh, Nathan, Nathan Buckley and Damien Hardwick launched it, actually, officially about five weeks ago on the Channel 9 footy show, which was fantastic. And as we know, um, it's just a great concept. It's it's all about basically rewarding the, the best clubman, whether it's a, a male or female at your f- local footy club. Um, we're going to send certificates out to each club then uh, they can um, send in to the Eastern Footy League why they won that award and, and things such as, you know, responsible behaviour, organising taxis for the youngsters. As, as we know, footy clubs, you want to make sure it's a safe environment and it's an environment where they really enjoy their football slash netball and basically get home in one piece. As we know, it's, um, it's a great environment. We think football's a, a great um, community sort of based um, sport. And we also know there's some monetary incentives there as well. Now, of course, so the Eastern Football League tasted success last year in this uh, in this competition with John Parks from the Park Orchards Footy Club getting over the line. So it's proof that you know some, some we know all about the great work that he did around uh, the Park Orchards Footy Club and and developing responsible behaviour with alcohol there. So there's there's some great initiatives certainly to come out of it, and that was proof through uh, through John's work last year. Oh, it certainly was, and um, you know we just want to make sure. You know, the John Park story gets out to all um, Victorian amateur football clubs, wherever they be, because, you know, the last we want is um, alcohol fueled incidents. And, and that's basically what the Wingman Project's all about. It's targeting the 18 to 25 year old sector. As we know, we're all wild and young at, at some stage. We've just got to make sure we, we do the right thing. And John did a magnificent job at Park Orchards, and he came to our awards dinner. And one thing we're going to do this year is invite all the league winners, whether they win the Victorian Wingman Award, because each league, um, John obviously won $250 and $250 for Park Orchards, but also he won the Victorian Wingman Award, which was $1,000 to him, plus $1,000 worth of sports equipment to their footy club. And as we know, footballs are pretty hard to come by and sports equipment, so football jumpers, taping, we know it's pretty tough out there at the community level. And, and also, I believe you're all league awards night is sort of late early october we'll try and get a league coach but if not a a really high profile assistant coach someone like darren crocker who played out here at baronia many many moons ago and obviously is a leading assistant at north melbourne get him to come out and present that award to your award winner so we think it's a it's a win-win for for us but more importantly for community level it's just giving something back and the coaches want to give something back to community level 
Where to from here, Danny? Uh, the, obviously, the competition launched a, a few weeks yeah. ago. We're about to send some certificates out. How do clubs get involved? Basically, all they have to do is, is fill out who's their wingman, 25 words or less who, send it into you, you'll send it into us, you'll, you'll have your winner. We'll then have a look at the 16 clubs throughout Metropolitan and Country Victoria. We've even got the Women's League involved as well, which is super important. It's a, it's a growing uh, league in itself. And then that winner will be announced Tuesday of grand final week at Crown where there's about 600 people. And as I said, it's pretty easy. It's pretty painless. We, we think it's a great community issue. And we, we don't expect everyone to get involved, but we see it's a no-brainer why you shouldn't get involved in it. So, and I know that Eastern Football League is one of the um, leading leagues from last year that the feedback we got from all the, all the clubs around here. And as I said, 42, is that right? 45. 45, so. wow. So um, a lot of people getting involved in, in footy in the Eastern League. And we know it's a, a really strong league out here. And it's one of, the, one of the leagues we have no issues with. And um, let's hope that's the case going forward. Well, Danny, we know you're very passionate about coach killers, but even more passionate about uh, curbing alcohol-related violence and the wingman competition is a great way to promote people from respective clubs. So I appreciate your time, and uh, we look forward to chatting with you very soon about hopefully that's another winner for the AFL in the wingman competition. Good on you, Benny. Much appreciated. Time for the AFL TV Play of the Week, and three good nominations last week, and this one came up with the goods in the end. Check this one out. Congratulations to Jarrah Clark of the Croydon Football Club. I know the Knox boys certainly would have liked it if he was doing that uh, with their club in 2012, but Jarrah's doing a nice job with the Blues in 2013. Three new plays for this week's edition of EFL TV for the play of the week. A, B and C. Check these out and hop on the poll afterwards at afl.org.au. In the middle of the ground, Beninga somehow got a handball out and they're going to stream forward again here. You would think banged on the boot there by Bell. Drives the ball inside, 450, bouncing ball. A bouncy, bouncy, you can't even go through. That is one of the biggest goals you will see, Bell. Streaming out of the middle of the... Schilling nearly took the mark at the fall of the ball. Dean just waited for it. Comes out towards Roberts again on the left boot. Oh. He might be able to stag a miracle goal here, Roberts. What a kick that is. Here was a... Sorry to do this to the Wontenna South Football Club, but we've got another nomination for the best haircut in the EFL, and it comes from the Devils, and it comes from the big number 62 out there at Wonny South, uh, Frosty. It's, a, uh, it's an interesting one, to say the least. Oh, it is. Um, absolutely a strange do on this one. Not so much the long locks, but Dean Young, head to a barber, mate. It needs some serious attention. <laughs> Well, there you have it, Frosty. Another edition of EFL TV done and dusted. Round 8 coming up. And the Round 8 radio game for EFL Game Day is Kilsyth and Coldstream. Two teams on the up, no doubt, in the past couple of weeks in Division 4. Haven't been out to uh, Pink's Reserve for a while to uh, cover a game out there. And haven't seen Coldstream for a while. Should be a, a bit of a classic match. Oh, it should be. I don't think we've covered Kilsyth in a radio game for a couple of years. I know the last time we covered Coldstream was round 1, 2011. Yep. So it's been a while between drinks for these clubs to get some attention, but I can't wait to get out there. Really looking forward to getting out to Pink, Pink's Reserve for Kilsyth and Coldstream on Saturday. Yes, make sure you tune in to 98.1 and efl.org.au from Saturday afternoon. Frosty, thanks for your work on EFL TV, and we'll catch you next week. All thanks to Ferntree Gully Hold. Well,